It's been a crazy two weeks since I uploaded my last video. Here's why Mr. Beast is a genius. The video has hit over 1.8 million views, my channel has grown by pretty much 30,000 subscribers, and I've just been casually chatting to Mr. Beast on Twitter, as you do. It was clear that you guys enjoyed this video, but I got a lot of comments asking me to cover Mr. Beast's early beginnings and how he first gained momentum. I suppose it's easy to look at the things he is doing now to grow his channel, but what about when he was just a kid in his bedroom with a small gaming channel? So today we're going to travel back in time before the money and crazy stunts to see how Mr. Beast really made his name. Stay tuned because this is going to be another YouTube masterclass from Jimmy Donaldson. Just 10,000 subscribers. I mean, I think I have over 450 videos on this channel. I um I put a lot of time into this channel and I'm glad people are enjoying my content. I'm glad people are liking my videos. I want to start out with a quick summary of Mr. Beast's YouTube journey. Then I'll break down three more lessons we can take on board as small creators to help us grow our own channels. Jimmy Donaldson started out his YouTube career by uploading gaming videos, mainly Minecraft and Call of Duty. Inspired by the likes of Ali A and PewDiePie, he had high hopes of becoming a game and commentary channel. He uploaded hundreds of videos but had very limited growth. He then started to shift his focus and everything started to change. One of his first successful videos was a video talking about how much PewDiePie makes. This was followed on by many other YouTube related videos where Jimmy began commenting on the platform as a whole and other large creators. Then came the now deleted Worst Intros series where Mr. Beast reacted to cringy intros from other small YouTubers. Leave a comment below if you remember those. This momentum carried through into his first videos that really hit the big time. When Mr. Beast started getting behind the camera himself, showing his real personality, the viewers came in their millions. The biggest breakthrough during this period is the infamous Counting to 100,000 video, which gained millions of views in a matter of days, propelling his name to the forefront of YouTube. Then came the money, which Mr. Beast used to make even more crazy videos, and the rest is history. At 28 million subscribers today, it's hard to believe Mr. Beast started out his channel by making videos like this. Pretty cool, isn't it? This is the bluebird, just the baby one. Pecan. Flamingo, I thought was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So what were the key things Mr. Beast did to blow up his channel when he had under 100,000 subscribers? What concepts are still relevant to small YouTubers today? The first thing Mr. Beast did that really sparked his growth on YouTube was he took the focus away from himself. Now this may seem counterintuitive, so let me explain. When Jimmy started on YouTube, he was just another upcoming gamer doing commentary videos. People don't care about the 1,000 small YouTuber making Minecraft videos like everyone else. Think about it, if you see a Minecraft video on your feed from another YouTuber who you don't know yet, what is compelling you to click on it? It was when he first started making videos on trending topics and other large YouTubers that he really started to see his first traction. He realised that to be quite honest, people didn't care about who he was back then. He had to talk about topics people did care about first. This is quite commonly called trend jacking within the YouTube community, where you make videos about a trending topic or something that is searched a lot, you piggyback on that subject and build an audience off the back of it. Now some people frown upon this and say you should only make content you want to make before anything else. And I think this should be always the end goal with YouTube. But in my opinion it's kind of like saying a business should make products they want and not what the market wants. When starting on YouTube it is so important to realise that people don't care about you when you're small. It's harsh but true. Mr Beast realising this very early on helped his content reach new audiences. So when he did start making videos about himself and his personality, he had a viewer base already there. So I recommend seeing what's trending within your niche and seeing where you can add value and input. For example, if you're a small gaming YouTuber, uploading a video called My New Record Kill in Fortnite probably won't get much traction, considering hundreds of people will have made a video similar to this before and the focus on the video is on you as a gamer. But making a video called How to Get High Kill Games in Fortnite Using the Lightsaber would have a much better chance of being discovered, as you are bringing value and appealing to new audiences while also addressing a trending topic, the newly added lightsabers in Fortnite. This is just an example, but this shift in focus is so important to keep in mind. Okay, now on to lesson two from Mr. Beast's early beginnings on YouTube, and that is to experiment and innovate with your content. When people hear the word innovate, they usually think of Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, not some kid from North Carolina who taped himself together with toilet paper, but hear me out. When you consider how much content is being posted on YouTube every single day, it's hard for upcoming YouTubers to create something new. In fact, let's be honest, half of YouTube these days is just rinsing and repeating what already works, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
But if you can innovate and bring something out that's completely fresh and exciting to viewers, it's a recipe for success. After building a base of an audience for himself, MrBeast began experimenting with his content and eventually he struck gold. His crazy challenges were something no one on the platform had seen before. Whether it be counting to 100,000, watching Everyday Bro for 10 hours straight, or saying PewDiePie's name 100,000 times. These videos were crazy, and don't lie, when you saw them the first time you probably said, why would anyone watch that? And then you proceeded to click right on it. I know I did. Not to mention, Jimmy timed these challenges pretty well, as it was during a period where YouTube had started promoting videos based on the amount of watch time they were getting. And what better way to get watch time up than to create a marathon stream? You see, a lot of small YouTubers look at what other big YouTubers are making in the space and just try to replicate it. However, experimenting with new ideas and innovating is exactly what you need to strike gold. It's on a much smaller scale than Mr. Beast, but when I made my first YouTuber analysis video in 2017, there was nobody really doing anything like it. In fact, I spent 20 hours making my Peter McKinnon video and then considered not posting it at all as I didn't think it would do well. It then went on to hit over 300,000 views in its first few months on YouTube, which I know is still nothing compared to Mr. Beast, but for a channel that only had a few thousand subscribers at the time, I was pretty happy with that. Mr. Beast has never been afraid to experiment with his content. Sometimes it doesn't work, but you only need to get it right once to have a viral video on your hands. To stand out on YouTube, you sometimes need to go against the grain. I suppose the key takeaway here is to never be afraid to experiment with your content. I just want to take a moment to talk about the music in the background of this video. A lot of creators make the mistake of using copyrighted songs in their videos. I've been hurt by this before when I used songs that I thought weren't copyrighted until this came up on my screen. I was using free songs from YouTube, but I found it very hard to find what I wanted and was never really sure if they were copyright free. Then I found Epidemic Sound a few months ago. Epidemic Sound is a huge library of 100% copyright free songs that I use for my voiceover videos. It's literally like Spotify for YouTubers. You can browse through different genres and moods to find the perfect music for your videos. It's usually 15 bucks per month, but you can try it out for free for one month using my link below. If you don't like it, you can just cancel it. Either way, it would really help out the channel and help me keep making content like this for you guys. Thank you for listening to that plug and now back to the video. The last lesson from Jimmy's start on YouTube is a simple one. He started with what he had. Simple as that. So many upcoming creators put off making content for a variety of different reasons, myself included. But one of the main things I hear is I don't have this camera, I don't have these skills, this editing software and so on and so on. I've definitely been guilty of this myself in the past. However, MrBeast is living proof that good things don't come to those who wait on YouTube, they come to those who start and persist. If you look at the content MrBeast started with and compare it to where he's at now, it's literally a world apart and judging by his latest tweet, it's only going to get even better. The point is he would have never got to the point he is now if he had waited around until he got a new camera or a better microphone. If you want to start a YouTube channel in 2020, just put out content. Yes, it might not be to the level you want at the start, but waiting around for the perfect moment when you have X, Y, or Z doesn't work. Listen to the man himself talk about his attitude towards the subject with Casey Neistat. And then I got an iPhone, which then, because I had a Windows phone, which only recorded like 480, I couldn't record with that. So once I got an iPhone, after years of like all this stuff, then I started recording myself and I moved a little bit away from gaming. And then I was able to buy a camera and, but I got like 200,000 subscribers with like an iPhone 5 recording in 30 FPS, 720p. You hear that? And uh, yeah, and that's why like, I tell people all the time, start a channel, they're like, I can't afford it. And they have like, literally like the new iPhone. And people used to always complain about the quality and I was just like, okay, well, I can't do anything. I need my next paycheck to buy something. So that wraps up part two of the Mr. Beast analysis on my channel. As a quick recap, these are the three things I feel we can learn from Jimmy to help grow our own channels. Number one, if your current content isn't working, try change the focus of the video and experiment with trend jacking. Number two, try bring something new to YouTube. It doesn't need to be as crazy as Mr. Beast's marathon streams. Just make sure you're not rinsing and repeating what everyone else is doing. And number three, start with what you have. If all you have is your mobile phone and an old laptop, start with that. There's no point waiting around when YouTube gets more competitive every year. I can't put into words how grateful I am for the support I got in the first Mr. Beast video. Thanks for all the comments and likes, it really means the world to me. It's funny, I set a like goal of 500 and right now the video is on about 140,000. Uh, I should probably start making bigger goals. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to set a like goal of 5,000 for this video. I don't want to get too carried away, but I'm sure we can hit that number. 
Thanks again for watching and if you're looking for great music for your videos while simultaneously supporting my channel, check out the link to Epidemic Sound below. Thanks once again for watching and as always, I'll see you at the top.